Is there more slack in this labor market than perhaps is appreciated? Uh, yes, but I, I'd say it's narrowing. So I agree with what everybody has said. I think the three main takeaways are you can ignore the softness at the headline because upward revisions to prior months gave that back. Uh, the manufacturing sector signals that concerns about uh, protectionism are just that concerns. It's not really changing the behavior of the business sector. And the third is, is the part time f uh, for economic reasons. If you go back five months, we've that that number has declined by almost 600,000. So firms can either hire new employees or they can convert, convert part-time workers to full-time workers and that's an indication that some of this you know further room to run in the labor market is, is likely shrinking uh, so I agree it was a very solid report top to bottom and for me those are are the three main takeaways hey Michael it's Rick Reader the uh, two seven on the uh, average early earnings pretty good pretty good number relative to what was expected but we still are going to see more transmission into wage acceleration. We think, what's your guess and when, where is it going and when do you think we start to see that? So, good morning, Rick. I, I agree with that. I think uh, we're looking for wages to go into the three to three and a half percent range. Uh, that's probably, we can get closer to three by the end of this year and maybe move ab above that next year. We see kind of the momentum in both average hourly earnings and the employment compensation index as suggesting that that trend. So I think as some of these other uh, slack indicators uh, get removed and closer to normal levels, that, that would be our outlook. Still a little below past cycles, but consistent with the lower productivity growth environment. Michael, this is uh, Greg Davis. I'd love to get your perspective on labor force participation rate. Where do you see that going over the course of the next year or so? So our view is that it's likely to go sideways. Um, I agree that, yes, in the very long run, employment growth has to, to slow down to, to where the demographic trends are. But I think for the foreseeable future, the 12 to 24 month, maybe even 36 month horizon, I think there are uh, the combination of people who could forestall retirement, hang in the labor market a little longer, a lower exit rate, as we would say, combined with some pulling of, of prime age men and women into the workforce. I think we, our view is it goes sideways kind of in the 62 7 63 range uh, for until the the cycle ends so I think we go sideways until the next recession and from there we'll move down to wherever the structural trend is yeah, Michael it's a uh, uh, Mike Collins uh, good morning uh, you, you expect wage growth to go into the threes and we've been expecting that for a long time now right so know, what right. is what is holding it back I know Citibank put out a uh, piece this morning anecdotally saying maybe it's the Millennials who are willing to accept things other than wages like all the all the benefits you know up in Bloomberg offices here you see all the all the free food right and right. maybe it's those types of um, ancillary things that are, are displacing wages what, what else can it be yeah, it could be. I, I hope they bring some of that free food over here, actually. Um, <laughs> but I, th I think at least from a, a trend point of view, I think we have to come back to the idea that productivity growth is still constrained. The structural forces limiting the supply side of the economy, pro labor productivity growing at 1% or a little bit less, and inflation still now just kind of approaching two. Those are kind of your, your trend factors keeping overall wage growth lower, but labor markets are now tightening, so we do expect that to push wages above 3%, but I agree with you. We've been saying this now for the last 12 to 18 months, and it's, it's coming later than, than we had thought. Michael Kaye from the Barclays, great to catch up with you.